I recently upgraded to a quick change tool post for the lathe. It came with some tool holders but of course they're not enough. So I'm going to use this one that came with the set and see if I can make one or three more of them. It seems to me that the first process would be just um, cutting out the channel for the, the dovetail. So that's 9.6 deep and about 34 wide. And I was going to originally make a standard tool post um, holder, but su subsequently decided to um, make it for the cutoff tool, as you'll see later. Now, I'm only a backyard bumbler and I don't have a DRO, so everything has to be done with scratch marks and by eye and constant measurement. So I'm roughing it out with, <laughs> strangely enough, a roughing end mill. My little mill is not powerful. So I've got to go slow and steady and take relatively shallow passes, even with the roughing end mill. Right, that's the dovetail area roughly cut out and I've cut it um, slightly narrow, narrower than required so I'll just uh, measure that but then I'm going to put in a, a normal end mill and just do both sides so it's nice and smooth and to the right size. Okay, let's give it a measure. Right, that's close enough for me. I've made a dovetail cutter with a carbide insert. It works, but with my little mill at least, we've got to go quite slowly and take very small passes. But that's alright. Okay, I reckon I'm close. Let's give it a test. No, not quite there yet. A puffteenth more. I understand this is how you measure a dovetail. I've got two 
five mil drills, just enough to um, to sort of get into the dovetail properly. And I measure the standard one, 29.35, and measure mine, and see how close I've got. Twenty-nine point three seven. Hoo hoo! That'll do. So now it's time to cut out the tool holder area, and as I said, I'm I'm going to make it for my, for a um, cut off tool. So it's got to be fairly wide, but not real deep. Right about now, I'm thinking I should have made that blank just a bit taller, so that there was more room um, for the set screws, etc. But I think it'll be all right. No flood coolant for my little mill, so I've got to rely on cutting oil and air compressor to keep the chips away. Right, that's done. Let's give it a test. Yep, nice easy fit. That'll be fine. So now I can drill and tap the holes for the set screws and the adjustment post. I'm drilling with a tapping size of 5mm for an M6 set screw. The adjusting bolts M10 so I'm drilling for the appropriate size tap hole for that as well. Now, I reckon this process is magic. I've got the mill set to um, low range, slow speed, and just pushing down, and it taps right down into the bottom of the thread, and then I reverse, and it screws back out again. It's really magic. I love it. I'm using these spiral taps, and they are really good. They even work brilliantly if you're um, tapping by hand. They have a very small taper so they can be used as a bottoming thread tap. But even with the small taper you can start them by hand if necessary.
Okay, so all the taps are done. The next step is to make the little knurled wheel that you use to adjust the height of the tool. Now this is one of the disadvantages of having the mill and the lathe as, as sort of um, a single unit. So every time I want to use the lathe, I've got to take the vise off and put the tool post on. Then of course to use the mill again, I have to realign the vise every time. Anyway, I've just got some mild steel round bar here that I'm going to use for the little knurled knobs thingies. Just like the one here. Knurling always turns out better if you've got a nice smooth finish to start with, so I'm just using a bit of 240 grit sandpaper to smooth out the steel a little bit. Now I can set up my shed made knurling tool and I'll knurl enough to make, you know, three knobs because I'll be making a couple more tool posts if this one works out. The process I use is to slowly tighten down on the work until I can see a knurl that looks like it's cutting in fairly well and it, the knurl looks okay. Once I'm happy with um, the amount of cut that I'm getting in the material, then I just engage the drive and let the auto drive run across the material. Yep, that looks alright. It'll look even better when it's cleaned. So now I'm going to drill and tap for an M10 and then part it off and the job will almost be completed. I don't have a collet for my lathe to hold the drill taps so I'm just starting it by putting a bit of pressure on the on the drill tap and then I'll just finish it off manually. But at least this method gets it nice and straight. So I'm using my nice shed made tap handle to hang onto the tap and tap the thread. Another good thing about these spiral taps is that they push the cut material out just like a drill does so they don't tend to bog up if you're doing blind taps. And here's the finished item. Looks pretty good. So I parted off another two. Okay, the job's all done and it's time to assemble. So, in with the set screws. I'm using an ordinary domed head um, Allen type bolt for the adjustment post. And I've got a nut already on it and the thumb wheel goes on. A little bit of Loctite because that adjustment post itself is not supposed to move. And we'll be all finished. Well, look at that. A thing of beauty, even if I do say so myself. One last step in the process, 
is to centre the tool up before I can start using it. Okay, I'm happy with that. And, surprise, surprise, one of the rare projects in the shed where I didn't make any mistakes. Woohoo! Anyway, thanks for watching.